for results, revenue at 3.17 billion euros, up 4.2 percent year over year. Reporting third quarter sales up 4.8 percent. Franklin Golf Romeo. And Fed policy will be driven by the pace of the data. Same policy will remain accommodative. Of features of off concessions low, still down about a percent on the day for a little more than four pennies. process or the technique that supports it or it supports and that's what I really want to talk about today and he's exactly right the, the techniques that we'll be discussing today could be applied with another tool hypothetically they could be done manually uh, the manual application of some of these concepts would be extremely time-consuming but I'm not going to say it can't be done uh, there are some other aspects of Monte Carlo that have been created explicitly to support this process and there, therefore, there may be some additional uh, tools with this process and approach in mind. My goal today is to show you how the combination of systematic trading, which we will discuss at length, and, and Quanti Carlo as an automated, or excuse me, programmatic backtesting tool. I'm going to make that mistake more than once today. Programmatic backtesting tool can enhance. Uh, can provide a process whereby you can enhance, I believe, your trading performance and also be more comfortable in understanding how it will perform the expect expectations and the actual outcomes. So before we get started, I want to talk, just want to mention two points that I think underpin everything we're going to talk about today. The first is up in the left hand corner, Andrew said that's not he, that's actually. Um, he said he's better looking than that, but that's Lord Kelvin, famous for the Kelvin scale. And he famously said to measure is to know. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Uh, that is exactly the tenet that Juan and Carlo and this process. It is about measurement uh, and about under measuring the performance of a trade. And uh, with that understanding, you have a baseline and a foundation to improve it. Einstein, uh, excuse me, Thomas Alva Edison said genius is mostly a little, mostly perspiration. And that's the other point which I think is, can be applied effectively by most of us. I don't think it takes genius. I don't think it takes the extraordinary creativity um, of a savant to be successful. And quite frankly, that was the motivation for creating Ponte Carlo. And, integrating with this process because quite frankly some of the founders were satisfied with the approaches that we had and we felt we David worked so Kelvin said the measure is to know and that's basically what we're about Heinz uh, keep wanting to say Einstein because he was a genius but Edison said it's mostly about effort it's about process and that's what you're going to hear today, you're going to hear this time and time again, and you're going to get bored with it, or you're going to tell me to stop, because this is really about a, a repeatable, standardized process that you can apply, that all of us can apply, I believe. It takes some work, uh, and it certainly takes commitment, but the process is the genius, if you will. And I certainly don't take credit for the process, but is, it is that the capability and the, and the effectiveness that's built into the process, supported by the appropriate tool that supports improved options results. Um, and it, it's, if you will, it's an, an approach for the rest of us, because I certainly was not very successful as a, a discretionary trader, uh, and I can't quite, quite, think, quite frankly came to this because uh, I needed an, another approach. And I can sometimes share with you how this all came about, and it's a long story. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the systematic trading process. There's that word again. We're going to talk about using Monte Carlo with that. We're going to do a demo of backtesting with Monte Carlo. And then finally, uh, we're going to talk about some of the challenges that face us as options traders. And I would say that these challenges apply regardless of what method you're using, regardless of what tool you're using. A, a tool like uh, Monte Carlo allows you to better understand the scale and scale of those challenges. And, and has some just some ability to to deal with them, uh, but options trading, as all of you know, has a unique set of challenges 
associated with the multidimensionality and, and multidimensionality and other, and the, the dealing in a, in a market uh, which is random and stochastic. So, um, but there are some other things that you may not be so aware of that are, are crucial, I believe, to successful outputs. Okay, but you know, as somebody else famous said, talk is cheap. And so why is this presentation and why is this approach and why is Juan Carlo of interest to you? Well, ultimately, you'll decide that. But here's an example of what can be done. This is an actual result. This is the result of an actual trade that I performed, I personally performed, over the past year. This is with a rut weak iron condor. If um, an iron condor, I guess, Andrew, most of your folks know what an iron condor is, um, but if not, we can talk about it. But let's say it's a non-directional. This is a non-directional trade. You can see the period there, the average annual compound return is 193%. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, that isn't because I'm a genius at trading. What, it, what, I, is it, what this is a result of is a systematic, statistically-based, measurement-based process supported, in this case, by Juan Carlo. In terms of full disclosure, and Andrew, this might be a discussion for the end of the con conversation or another day, this trade was optimized, and I'm using that term in a very specific sense. This trade was optimized using something called Quanti Carlo Enterprise Edition, which incorporates advanced predictive modeling techniques. Now, that's, it's the same, the same concepts, the same activities that you're going to see today with one additional element, and that is to, to perform a formal optimization of the results. In any case, and I'm pretty happy, believe me, just as a trader, I'm happy about this, obviously, um, at a personal level. But here's what I think is more important. Because what we're talking about today is repeatability, 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 the individual, the ability to trade with repeatable and consistent results and to develop and apply new trades and new strategies with consistency and repeatable results. So this is what I, I find actually most, okay, on the right side, you see the, the results that were predicted as a result of the back testing that we performed. On the left side, on the left, the, the middle column, you see the actual results. There is a, a high degree of, a, a degree of consistency and a, um, a rewarding degree of consistency in terms of giving you confidence that this approach works. One of the things you'll see is that the predicted results were actually more pessimistic. Notice the average loss was, average losing trade was 60% higher than the actual. And the average, the, average win, the average win over all trades was substantially lower than the, what, that which we've actually achieved. So there's good news here and there's bad news. The good news is that we were able to uh, achieve what we expected. This also suggests there's room for improvement, and this brings up a topic for another day. But it's when you, uh, how frequently must one or should one revisit this analysis? This suggests that there is an opportunity uh, for uh, additional, uh, additional returns that we're probably not getting because this trade was optimized over a less friendly period for non-directional trades. Up until the last month, that you probably know this has been a very good year for non-directional trades. In any case, why am I showing you this? Because ultimately, I can't guarantee that you can achieve this. I can't guarantee that I'll ever achieve it again. But this process gives you the wherewithal to, to study, to prepare, to analyze your trade at no cost other than the cost of the tools and your time. And to be comfortable that if you've done this in a thoughtful and complete way, to have a set of results that you can be confident will perform as expected. And the other thing this lets you do is have a record and you can manage and track the actual results versus the predicted results. When they diverge, you know that you need to revisit your analysis and possibly uh, revise uh, or restructure your strategy. But this, if you remember nothing else from this presentation, remember this slide. This, I believe, is the goal of most of us as traders. And what is that? It's called, I call that predictive reliability. 
the confidence that the results of your live trading, which is what we all care about, all this analysis is merely a means to an end, and that's a part of a profitable live trading. You can be confident that the results of this trading, of your app trading, will be consistent with the tested strategy. And secondly, you can be confident, and this is, this is a little more subtle, you can be confident that the, the choices you make about your strategies are the correct ones and will lead to superior results. And what do I mean by that? I think it's easier to discuss. We'll use that and we'll talk about that in an example. But for instance, one of the questions, these, these are questions such as, when do I enter the trade? What's the best uh, delta target for my short strikes? Should I use another met met metric other than delta to put my short strikes on? How should I trigger my adjustments and how should I trigger my exits? This approach with Quantico will allow you to answer those questions confidently. Now, the ability to have a successful trade requires your creativity, your commitment, your understanding, and your experience. But this gives you the opportunity to test those and to select the good from the bad, and particularly to avoid spending time pursuing unproductive channels because you can very quickly separate the wheat uh, from the chaff. One other thing that I want to say about this whole approach, and I should have mentioned in the last slide, one of the reasons we think this approach is useful is because it can be applied to any type of trade, whether it's directional, non-directional, signals-based. IOTA is agnostic with respect to trades. I'm not here to promote a particular trading style or particular trading strategy. This tool and this process is also agnostic, and you can apply it to any kind of trade you want. If you know the old uh, saying that it's better to give a man, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. My hope is that with this approach and with a tool like Juan Carlo, you can set the foundation for a lifetime of successful trading and that you will know how when new opportunities come along or new trading strategies come along or new ideas come along, you'll be able to test them and apply them successfully. So that's another reason why today's talk's been a little different because you're not going to see a lot of time talking about specific strategies and not going to be spending a lot of time showing you expiration graphs and things like that. This is about a process that applies across the board and has been used a lot of places. So what is systematic trading? So let's assume if we're correct and what, what traders want is predictive reliability, consistent output to the, and consistency between their strategies as they test them or develop them and the outcome of those strategies and the ability to choose between to make good choices in their strategies. If we assume that's what traders want, then how do you get there? Well, we can imagine a lot of ways. The way I believe works best for most of us, it certainly works best for me, is, this, is a concept called systematic trading. This was pioneered by a guy named Robert Pardo. If you haven't read his book, I would encourage you to do so. And to the gentleman who asked about the applicability of this methodology to other than options, Pardo's book is um, based on his experience with equity trading and signals trading and more generally technical indicator trading. I would encourage anybody who's interested in this trading to be, um, excuse me just a second. My apologies. No, yeah, no, no problem at all. And by the way, your sound's been very good this, this yeah, whole time. So. so I apologize for that. In any case, so Robert Pardo, a book I would recommend anyone read who's interested. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of utility in there. Uh, and it's in, But the methods uh, and the approach and the concepts are, I think, broadly applicable, as Andrew very correctly said, to pretty much any approach to anything. Um, 
and it's being used. It's, these concepts are being used out everywhere. And, um, and I want to talk about some of the other areas, just touch on some of those other areas to give you a sense of how useful this approach is. Um, the two primary tenets, trading methodically, which means consistently or in a rules-based approach against a fixed plan with known risks and rewards. Don't emphasize that known risks and rewards. And secondly, trading with plans that have been tested. That sounds, when you, when you put that in front of somebody, it's kind of like, duh. Well, of course, that's what we want to do. I think that what we don't understand fully in the world of options, and I'm not being critical of anyone or any style, is that I don't think we understand how much randomness we truly face. And without understanding that, and without having a way to test it and to, and to, insofar as possible, deal with it and reduce it, we don't really understand what we can expect from our trades. And that leads us to a lot of difficult times and very uh, anx anxious and unpleasant times. And one of the benefits of this approach, I will tell you, speaking personally, is that it reduces the tension and the uncertainty. And I think, aside from anything else, that helps us all be better traders because we're less inclined to take actions based upon what we see are difficult circumstances. The other thing I want to say about this, if I, and I want to please, this is another important thing to keep in mind. Whatever I say here, when I speak predict, in terms of prediction or I talk about this benefit, it is in the long term. I am not suggesting that I or this methodology can tell you what's going to happen to the trade that you place today for next week or next month. We are interested in the long term and taking advantage of the law of large numbers. And the way we can do that is by applying this method supported with appropriate uh, tools and techniques. But this is about the long term. And it will not, and these rules and these guidelines that you, no, they're not guidelines. There will be standard steps of trading, standard, standard techniques, or excuse me, steps or strategies. These will be those that have shown their performance and their profitability over time. It does not guarantee that you won't lose some trades. And it doesn't guarantee that the trade you place tomorrow will necessarily be a winner. But what you can know, for instance, in my trade, the, as, you, as those of you who trade condors know, they're great when they work, but when the um, underlying moves against you, they can be pretty frightening. Um, and one of the nice things about uh, the, the set of rules that I have is that because I've satisfied myself that they work over the long term, it, I don't feel quite so anxious to try to do, take some steps to combat a loss. Uh, so it, it reduces the anxiety, the personal anxiety, and it, I think it makes us better traders because it takes away some of the encouragement or the sense that I must do something. Uh, in many cases, the best thing to do is nothing, especially if that's built into your well-tested strategy. And so, what I want to do today is take this concept and show you how we apply it in uh, Quante Carlo. Um, what are the objectives? And um, I, all of these could be discussions for days, and I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to belabor any of them, and I want to make sure I get through everything we want to talk about today. But here are some of the objectives. Again, you're going to talk to me again. Reducing the uncertainty, knowing, improving predictive reliability achieving greater consistency between what you expect and what occurs and when they differ, knowing why they differ, knowing how to measure that and knowing how to improve it. The last bullet I think is particularly important. How many times do we go to a webinar and we get a, it sounds like a good idea. In fact, I just watched one um, a couple days ago on the squeeze um, indicator that, that actually was an SMB where Andrew you did his usually excellent job at hosting. Um, and I thought, you know what, this is a very interesting indicator. The good news is that with, with Quante Carlo and with this method, I know how to, to test that and satisfy myself 
as to its utility for my trading. And I can, I can, I can subject it to, to rigorous testing and then decide whether the outcome and the results uh, meet my particular trading criteria. So, um, so what are the elements? So we've talked about some of the objectives. And again, I, uh, Andrew, if there are any questions for any of this, look, there, I know we're throwing a lot of people today. There are a lot of ideas here, all of which could be the subject of lengthy discussion. So I don't want to jump over something that people think are interesting, but I also want to make sure we get you know, through most of the, the matter, subject matter. So what are the elements of systematic trading as I'm proposing them today? First, and this is, we're focusing on preparation. Now you, you say, well, wait a minute, I've been in mentoring classes, I've, I, I go to webinars, I do everything Andrew tells me, I'm, I'm preparing for testing. Well, of course you are. We're talking about a very methodologically, statistically oriented, measurement oriented preparation, which actually may, for some of you may not be a lot of fun. This is not a, this is a, uh, this process we're proposing is not for everyone. It takes effort, it takes perspiration, as Edison said, but it also takes a willingness to be comfortable with analysis and the results of analysis as opposed to the results of actually working with a trade. Uh, I think this is worth the effort. I think it's worth the lack of excitement, but that's a decision you'll make. So what else are we going to do? We're going to do extensive formalized testing. And I, word, I use the word formalized. I use that word for a reason. There is a way to test. There are many ways to test. What we're going to try to do is give you one way that gives you useful results. And then we're going to use inferential statistics. Now, I can hear the screaming from the crowd at this point. Believe me, these are all very, these are, these are large concepts. There, there can be a tremendous amount of mathematics behind them. That's not our goal. We don't expect you to become statisticians. We don't we expect you to become expert testers. We, we know that you're smart folks and we believe that you can learn uh, basically the process and how to use these techniques in what I think is a very, system, it is a systematic and um, well-defined and I believe um, understandable, not mysterious process. Inferential statistics are crucial. And I could go, you know, I could get really boring about this. But because of the variability and the uncertainty associated with options trading, which we're going to talk about at the end of this, understanding the predictability and the reliability, uh, the predictive reliability, excuse me, and, and the uncertainty or the lack of reliability of your results is crucial. And without inferential statistics, I argue you cannot differentiate an unproductive strategy from a productive one. This has to do with the nature of statistics and it has to do with the nature of the options world where variability is your enemy, is all, the enemy of all of us. And the only way to deal with that, in my opinion, is to first understand what that scope of that variability is and that uncertainty is. And to do that, I argue you need inferential statistics, but you don't need to become a statistician and you don't need to go back to school and you don't need to pass any test. We're, I'm just going to show you, we're going to show you how you apply these methods in what I believe is an effective way. One analogy that I would offer you, we talked about the fishermen. I would say that if I had a goal for people who use this method in the tool, it would be to be to trade like attorneys perform in the, in the courtroom. There's an old statement, an old aphorism that says a, a good attorney never ask question to which the answer is not already known. I'd like to suggest a great way to trade is that you never take an action, whether that's to enter a trade, adjust a trade, or exit a trade, that you do not already, whose impact you do not already understand based upon extensive testing. So when you take an action trading, you know what the implications of that are going to be over the long term. I cannot tell you the difference that makes in approaching trading in terms of your effectiveness of trading and the reduced tension and the better performance as a trader. Okay, so there are a couple of methods we use. What is factorial analysis? Um, this is much simpler to an application than it may sound. Basically, it's a way to organize your testing of your strategies 
It's a very well established method. It's been it was originally used in Venner in the twenties. There's a huge liter literature about it. Um, there are many ways that this is applied. This is used throughout industry. We are bringing it to options trading, but it's been used successfully in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, in um, chemical fields. Almost in any well-established industry has used this method. It, the way we use it, I think it's fairly straightforward. You don't have to become an expert, expert in it. And we designed QC Monte Carlo to support it. So essentially we have factorial analysis combined with inferential statistics. And what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to show you uh, how we do that with Monte Carlo. But again, I would go back to one thing. This is all about preparation. If any of you ever painted a house, let's say a structure, not talking about painting a work of art, you know what preparation means. You sand the walls, you crack it, you caulk the holes, you buy the right paint, you make sure the color is correct, you make sure the style of things is correct. When if you've done all those things well, the painting is fairly straightforward. If you haven't done those things, it becomes much more problematic. That's what we're talking about. It's about a focus on preparation for trading using these methods. So, how does what again? Just to revisit Monte Carlo and how and why we're going to have just to set the frame for. I'm going to show you next. It's programmatic, automated backtesting. You can use it to design and create tra trading plans, uh, and it's it's quite powerful. Honestly, you can create simple ones to very complicated ones. I've done weird ores and nested condors. Um, we designed it with that in mind. We originally set out that we wanted to be able to create any kind of a trading plan or mimic any kind of a trading plan at Quinta Carlo, and we're probably 95% of the way there. We have lots of symbols, that is, the underlines, and that's growing. These are all part of the service. When you, have, when you own Quinta Carlo, you have access to our options database. We have both end-of-day and 15-minute data. Uh, and we have, um, which, of course, allows you to decide the granularity that you need for your particular evaluation. And we have... Uh, a graphical design editor, which I think is the perhaps the most compelling part, or one of the most compelling parts of Quanta Carlo, because essentially it allows you to create these very complex trading plans with entry rules, exit rules, adjustment rules, without programming, without having to resort to a, resort to a programming language. Now it's not easy, but you don't have to learn a programming language. You have to be, you have to learn the um, the techniques and this uh, graphical design editor and a markup and supporting markup language. And that's where operation. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Um, we're gonna demo, we're gonna, Quarty Carlo has a number of modes. We have a baseline mode, which is designed to get you started very quickly, and I'll show that to you. And we're gonna run a 12 month back test. And any of you are so inclined, I invite you to time this. We're gonna, we're gonna test a, Quick credit spread over 12 monthly expirations, um, or maybe actually 13. And you can think about how long that might take you. And we'll see how long it takes in Quante Carlo. Now, I want to be very clear just speeding up back testing is not the answer. It's part of the answer. It's perhaps necessary, but it's certainly not sufficient. So, speed this is not a talk about speed, but I want to show you what efficiency or speed allows you to do. And the next thing we're going to do is take a look at a more realistic example using, again, a put credit spread to show you how you could apply this concept of factorial analysis uh, in a realistic setting uh, to, in this case, a simple, a simple kind of trade. And I didn't want to overachieve or make it too complicated, but I hope this gives you a sense of how you can apply this method and the tool together. So what I'd like to do now Unless, Andrew, there's any reason to revisit any of these ideas, I'd like to uh, go ahead and, and move to the demo. Is that all right? I think that is preferred, yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> in my experience, this uh, this crew likes to see things in action. So you bet. So that's what we're going to do. Go for it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Um, Let's go to basically this is Quante Carlo is a client server architecture. You're looking at the client. The work you do the design work in the client. 
Uh, and then when you have created your trading plan, uh, which is the which is a virtual equivalent of a trading plan that you all bring to your trades, um, it is then sent. It is converted into XML and sent to our to server, where the work is done, and then the results are returned to you. Uh, this is an entry level approach to show you how easy uh, we are trying to make this tool easier to use, and so we have various levels at which it could be used. Uh, and my guess is that for most of you, we're going to show you the advanced mode today. But I wanted to give you a sense of how you get started with this. So in this case, we've already put, picked a put credit spread. Um, in this case, um, we're going to set, uh, we're going to use it based on a target delta, a place in the short, and the width is already set. We're going to choose a DIA, and we're going to run a one month, oh, excuse me, a one year trade. All right, so there we go. Um, Again, this is the trading, the, the analysis, the, the testing is actually performed at our servers. And um, so we have this extensible architecture um, that allows you to, if you want, you can upgrade the server, you can have your own server and then get um, even faster performance than you're seeing here because you're not sharing it with anybody. What this is doing is applying the rules in this trading plan. Okay, so that was, when I tested it was 30 seconds. Okay, so we tested 13 months, actually, from, in this case, from 2004 to 2005. And you can, we, have, we have information, we have uh, option data from 2004 through um, August. And we update it every month, so August of 2015. This is a monthly trade using DIA, and we are successful. This is the, this is the information, looks like we won we won 11 out of 13 times. Uh, and, you know, most of us with an, what, what's that, an 85% win rate, that's pretty good. Now, there's some other measures here that I want to bring your attention to, but this is the kind of result that you always, this is the information you automatically get from any of these trades. Uh, we give you uh, your, average, your net profit. Uh, this was a one time, so, you're, you know, the, the numbers are relatively small. The average return was 6.38. So you made a little money. Um, probably not, but this is really more important. This is a confidence interval. We're going to revisit this in a, in a little while. But basically, this tells you what is the reason. Well, if I do this again, if I were to or do this live, if I were to test this for 2005 to 2006, what could I expect? And re, and and statistics will tell us that it's likely. Uh, that that your that your result can fall reasonably within this range, and what does that tell us? It tells us you could do a lot better. It also tells us that you could do worse, and you could actually lose money. The other message message I'd like to take you take away from this today, which applies to your trading, whether whatever method you're using, whatever tool you're using, or if you're not using a tool at all, this uncertainty is part of your strategy. You're better off knowing it than not knowing it, but it is inevitably part of your strategy. There is limited predictive reliability. The predictive reliability that can be achieved is a function of the approach we're, te we're testing, where it's taking samples, those samples have inherent uncertainty. So what you ultimately, of course, want to do, and this is a discussion from the other day, is you want to have a trade that reliably produces results, positive results. And secondly, you want to trade or a strategy that reliably produces superior results to other trades or other strategies. And I will tell you, given the variability associated with options trading, that's not that's easier to say than to do. But um, the good news is that you can now you have an engine. You test. Okay, we're gonna we tested it. We ran, we did an hour years test in thirty seconds. All right. Now now we have the wherewithal to ask some questions of the data, and if we ask them in a smart way in an effective way, we're going to get some useful information that we can use to trade. And you can see the other measures that they have we give you. You got to get one six times in a row. That's great. Um, you average win size. Uh, here's one of the, this right here, this other thing, average win and average loss size. That's one of the banes of options trading, as most of you know. We can, we can create strategies that win very frequently, but those losses, if we're not careful, can 
uh, can reduce or eliminate most of the profits that, that we can see. This average win to average loss ratio is, I think, very important. And um, this is a little lower, all things being equal, than you'd, you'd like it to see. You'd like to see. Um, so that's an example of what you can do with Quantic Carl. You can do it on any level. And you know, if this took if this took 30 seconds to do one year, then we could test, we could do a 10-year test in what 300 seconds, which is five minutes. If you have that ability to be that efficient, that gives you the ability to ask lots of questions, get quick answers without risking capital in the market or without the time that it takes to learn from the market. I'm not suggesting you can't learn from data in the market, but I can learn a lot more quickly here than I can uh, by spending an equivalent year uh, in the market with all the other attendant risks. Uh, this, by the way, Quante Carlo, this Quante Carlo we're using is a commercially available. Um, it was released, uh, version 1.0 is released in July. And um, you can, uh, we have an interesting approach to using it. We don't actually offer licenses anymore. Although you could find one to be, well, you basically, you purchase, you, it's a page you go a model. And Andrew, we can talk about that more if people want to. All right, so let's, so this is an example of the potential that Coney Carlo offers you just in terms of efficient, speedy backtesting. Now let's look at a more meaningful application of this. We're gonna to go to the advanced mode. Notice when we go to the advanced mode, we now are looking at something called the, the, uh, the graphical design interface, the graphical design editor. And this is where we actually create um, uh, the trading plans. Um, you know, given, given the time we have today, I, 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 Andrew and I talked about this, but let me show you, um, let me, go you, let me go take you to um, the example that I want to, um, present today. And let me show you how we created that, or at least at a high level, we created that. Um, we organized uh, in um, 20 Carlo, we organized um, our into projects. Um, this project uh, is called Blog Trades, and I created, uh, I used this to create the example. Over here, you're seeing what we call assets. Um, Monte Carlo uses the concept of an asset. An asset can be, oh, and assets are usually their expressions, if you will, which support rules. Essentially, a trading plan, it consists of a set of rules. Those rules, in turn, use assets such as conditional expressions, strike selector expressions, other kinds of things, um, to create the trading plans. The, rule, the assets uh, are reusable. Um, and you have a huge array of capability in terms of defining these conditions and defining and creating rules. And, and I have not found, I'll say, and I've done hundreds of these, I have not yet found a trading plan that I could not support. There certainly are some, but this is a, this is a very flexible tool. That's also one of the challenges of the tool, I will tell you. The learning curve is not, the learning curve is, Significant. Now we want to do everything we can to help you, but I would argue that um, and that'll decision you're going to make that it's worth the effort. So let's take a look at this trading plan. Um, notice what we have here. In this case, we have an entry rule where we're going to put on a credit spread, and we have two exit rules. So let's just very. Andrew suggested I would show you how to assemble this. So let's assume that we took the credit spread that we saw from that example. We are now are going to further develop it, which we can. So let's assume I started there, and I said, you know what, I want some exit rules. Uh, and, I, and in this case, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at an exit rule, two exit rules, one a max loss, two a max profit. And the question is, how do I add them? How do I add them to my trading plan? essentially create a rule. So let's, I've already created these rules, but let's look at um, how they, um, how they work, um, what they look like. And let's look at the entry rule first. All right, notice that we have here a condition which says within a time entry window and we have some actions. 
we have an action to put on the credit spread. We have an, then an action that says record the max loss amount and record the max profit amount. Um, when we go back to the when we go back to the trading plan, um, if I've created that, let's just assume in this case that um, I have. Um, I want to show you how this. Suppose I've created the rule, so I'm going to take it out. Now I want to uh, create this rule, and I want to add it to the trading plan. So all I do is drag it in there. Now you notice on the right hand side that this is the English language version of this trading plan, and you'll notice now that the in, the rules or the instructions associated with that with that entry rule are now showing up here. So this always tells you what. Um, what the current trading plan, the current logic of your trading plan is always seen here. Likewise, um, if I wanted uh, to create a, a trading rule, let's just take a quick look at that. Um, and rules are the essence again of this because ultimately we view the way you, your trading plan consists of rules, statements. I enter a trading plan under these conditions, I exit under these conditions, I exit my loss list to be. So, um, so how do you create a rule? Well, essentially in Monte Carlo, we have two cons, we have two, every rule consists of two elements. We have a condition element. Um, in other words, something has to happen. Uh, we have to get to a certain DTE, we have to get to a certain delta value, we have to get to a certain minimum credit or something. Um, let's suppose I've already defined one of those. So I'm just going to drag this in there. So now that tells us the condition. In this case, we have this concept of an entry window. We usually assume the traders want to have a, a, a range of time during which they want to end their trade. This can be one day, it can be 30 days. In this case, uh, we already have pre-configured that, that condition. Uh, now you say, well, you know what? When I enter this, what I want to do? I want to uh, enter my, I want to enter my, um, my put spread. In that case, we can also do this with drop down. Um, excuse me, with a right click, so a drop down menu. So in this case, what I want to do, I've already created this action, uh, and then I sign that. So now I have a rule, and this rule essentially says within this time window, and these variables that can be set, uh, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Within this time window, as soon as you could, uh, I want you to put on this credit spread. What does the credit spread look like? Um, the credit spread is defined uh, in something called a, a, a position model. Um, and um, what, is it, what does that look like? So here's an example of a position model. Now here we are back to an expiration graph. So essentially you define your, your position, in this case a, a spread. Um, we then have, we then strike selectors. So essentially, if you think about this, you do this the same way you do it in, 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 in the real world. You define your logic. You define how you're going to place your strikes. You define when you want to enter. You define the, 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 the strategy you want to use, the structure, uh, whether it's a credit spread uh, or an iron condor or a strangle or a straddle. You can do all those things. And then you essentially assemble these pieces. And you assemble them into um, rules. The rules then instruct the trading plan, and the trading plan is then applied to a particular underlying and a particular um, underlying means in a particular time, period of time for that underlying. Um, so this is a brief overview of, of how you approach this. Now, obviously, there's a lot to learn here. We have created a number of tutorials. We also have a number of clients who have been very successful with this. Um, it is not trivial, and I don't want to suggest that it is. On the other hand, I believe, and I think the clients that we have are using the advanced mode and using it effectively can tell you that it gives them extraordinary and unprecedented ability to evaluate their, their trades. Um, we, of course, are interested in encouraging people to use it, and we want to do every week, everything we can to help them learn. Um, and you know, Andrew, if there were interests, we could we could have a we could have a demo of the tool. 
and we could go through the process of defining uh, the complete process of defining a strategy from scratch. Um, and you can then see uh, what's really entail, what really entailed. Um, so it, this point, Andrew, what I wanted was planning to do was go back to showing the example and the examples of the training plan uh, against in this factorial example. Is that useful at this point, or should we go? Should we spend more time here? Um, so what I what I'd like to see it is like an optimization. Okay. <clears throat> so if you were to take a set of rules. Right. Maybe that are already your just right. depending on how long it would take. It, it right. could be something that's already in place, but then add a couple variables right. and then compare the results. Okay, so that's what we're right. Thank you for that. That's what we'll do. Let's go back then a minute to PowerPoint. Um okay, let's assume that Andrew Andrew is full of brilliant ideas, but let's suppose he said, I've heard about this thing called a principle. I, some of my colleagues are doing pretty well with it, but I want to do some studying in my own. And he said, I think I want to start out with three. I want to study three parameters, or what we call factors. He wants to study the placement of the short. He wants to look at exits based upon maximum loss and maximum profits. Now, there could be obvious, we could do a lot, obviously, study many other things. You could look at the width of the spread. You could look at the entry. You could compare monthly spreads to weekly spreads. You could test um, adjustments, perhaps. But for purposes of this demo, let's assume that we're going to look at these three things. And we're going to test three, we have three factors, the short delta target, multipliers for maximum loss and maximum profit. We multiply the opening credit by these numbers. And you can see the numbers that we picked there. These are purely for demonstration purposes, although they, are, they reflect um, some of the work that I've done in the, in the past. You could pick 100 values for these factors. You could pick six. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to pick a manageable number that, wouldn't be, that, we, that would be realistic but yet wouldn't confuse you. All right. So now, what, what, what do we do? These three, three factors times three choices is 27. So we have 27 factorial combinations. And again, I don't want to overwhelm you or frighten you with this terminology. These are just combinations. These are just ways to test each combination of the three values. So if we look at the first one, the exit max loss multiplier will be 2. The exit profit multiplier will be 55. So what does that mean? So let's just assume that the entering credit were $100. This means that we'd, lo we'd exit if we lost $200 or more. We would exit if we earned $55. And we would, we're going to place the uh, short, the highest possible strike, okay, the nearest strike to the money, with less than or equal to a, an absolute value uh, of the delta of 0.08. Now, two points. First, we know that delta that uh, puts have negative delta. This, so we're using the absolute value. Secondly, in this case, in our Monte Carlo, we me measure delta in this case by the uh, the option level, not at the contract level. Most people, probably many people, would call that a delta of eight. That's the same thing. This is at the option. So we're testing this at a, at a put delta short put delta target of eight. And you can see, if you go through these other 20, the rest of them, we're testing these values uh, and in different, uh, we're testing each of them with the others. One, this is one of the benefits of factorial analysis. You exercise all of these combinations and you begin to see, which is terribly important, the way these choices interact. Factorial analysis was developed with the idea that one at a time testing, where you'll optimize or improve one, one, at a, one, one element of a strategy or a formula, uh, at a time is not the best way because you, you don't see the interaction. You can't measure the interactions. Factor analysis lets you do that, and that's one of the reasons why it's such a powerful tool and, quite frankly, an efficient tool. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the results, but let's go back to what we're going to do now is we're going to run the, te the uh, back test for this first multiple, for this first combination, 2, 55, and 8. So let's go back to 
Monte Carlo. Okay, now in this case, how do we how do we test? We we have to have three things, just as we have to have three things in a real world. We have to have um, it's we have to have a market. We have to have an underline. All right. So in this case, we're going to test what? Just pick what we're going to test. We're going to do a five-year back test of this strategy. We're going to do it against, a, a, you need a trading account. So you define trading accounts. In this case, it's just a reg T, what dollar condition trading account. By the way, all these things are definable by you. Um, you know, you can create um, these periods. We, we have 10 years of what? Um, symbol or option data, so we can go back 10 years if you want. I just, this is a reasonable time. And then we select the training plan. In this case, the one that we've been looking at is this um, put spread, what I call highest strike. All right, now, so now remember we're executing against those 27 combinations, so we're going to submit this, but wait a minute. We want to make sure that we enter the three values. So, uh, so we, and we call a test a job. And now Quante Carlo is going to say to you, what do you want to test? What values do you want to test? So in this case, I've already pre-configured them. Remember, we're going to test a max loss multiplier of 2, a max profit multiplier of 55, and an absolute target, an absolute value of delta target uh, for the short of 0 0.08. Now, suppose I was doing another combination, but I do. I just put in here and put, you know, I think one of the other uh, just do, we put a seven in here. Um, so the pro these are prompted, we have the ability, these are variables that we've defined, as you would define in maybe a programming language, and then the quantity crawler will prompt you optionally for any of the variables that you want to test. So in this case, we're ready to go. So we're going to say OK. Now, um, we call these jobs, and do you want to save this job configuration? In this case, I'm going to say yes, just because it makes it easier for me to show you the results. Um, and we're going to just call this just so we can identify it as an SMB. Okay. Um, now, this is going to take a couple of minutes. Um, and this is kind of like watching paint dry or bed or bread baking. So, Andrew, are there any any Questions that I could answer, or any things we could want to talk about while this is going on. One comment <clears throat> that is, uh, while it may seem like paint drying, it's better than uh, doing this by hand, which this may take a couple minutes, but right compared and, to doing this by hand would be several weeks. And the other thing is, yes, and 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 again, efficiency is not an end in itself, but it's a means to an end. It lets you ask questions that you couldn't ask reasonably doing automated back testing. The other benefit of this, um, computers don't get tired. Uh, I've done back to me, uh, we've all done manual back testing. After a while, it just becomes so mind-numbingly boring that we make mistakes. Um, and when I when Andrew showed me the back testing he'd done for his T Condor, I was impressed because that that is a major amount of work. Okay, so that took what? And Let's before before you do that, because you you offer yes for questions, and there was a couple, and I'm going to say they were so similar, I'll just combine them. Okay. Um, they would like to know if you can use technical indicators like a moving average crossover or yes. a MACD you can. Uh, to trigger entries. Yes, you can, and you can do that in two ways. You can do that in two ways. You can either implement them within uh, Quante Carlo, or um, you can use a, an external file. And this, we have a number, of, we're working with a number of signals traders, and just let me very briefly answer that question. What they decided was the best, because they have very powerful tools for their indicators. They asked us to give them the ability to, to input the results of the signal, which was the entry date or the exit date. So with any, uh, with any of these strategies, you can append uh, file, a date, let's call it a date file, and you can have entry dates based upon your signals, exit dates based upon your signals. That seems to be the preferred approach because then you can you have a full range of all the signals, maybe the proprietary signals, the signals that are only available in third party, whatever, that you can then you can ex abstract the dates 
put it in a CSV file, attach it to the strategy, and um, and then that controls entry, exit, adjustment, whatever. Is that, is that, is that explained, Andrew? Yeah, definitely. And there's, uh, before you get to the report still, um, great question came in, and that is, uh, I lost it though. Where'd it go? Can people delete their, no, here it is. Um, we discussed this when just the two of us were talking, um, but any, do you have walk forward analysis included? And then what are your thoughts on overfitting in a back test? In well, operation? those are great. Those are great, great questions. Um, the answer to the first is that we have not within Quanti Carlo, the client that you're looking at here, implemented uh, a walk forward. Uh, I think that's something that we should do. Uh, you can, of course, do some in-sample and out-of-sample testing by um, uh, separating your markets. In this case, you know, we did five years of, of rut. We could do, uh, we, could have, we could have tested this against 2005 to 2010 and then, or 2009 and then, and then run it again, run the, run the, the test against 2010 to 2015. So I agree with the gentleman completely that ultimately um, out of sample testing is terribly important. Um, and we've had some discussions about a walk forward. Um, the other thing that he asked about overfitting, which is a huge question, and we're going to get to that in a minute, but um, I mentioned something called Quanti Carlo Enterprise Edition. And what we have done there is to integrate these results with uh, advanced predictive modeling and with the explicit, explicit concern to document and address overfitting. And I'm comfortable that using these methods, and this again is a discussion for another day, but um, there are ways now to capture and measure what we call, I didn't know this until I started this, it's called the bias variability trade-off. And that is the, that's the technical term for for overfitting. And the nice thing about these methods that we use in Quanti Carlo Enterprise Edition is they explicitly address that. And you can see the balance between bias, which is error, in other words, the error of the prediction, and the impact on variability or overfitting. Um, so the answer is within Quanti Carlo, as we see it, this version, we don't explicitly address overfitting, except that you can address it implicitly by testing these various values, and also with some of the concepts I want to get to in a minute. Within Quanti Carl Enterprise Edition, we have to address it explicitly because we agree with you completely that that is, that all this testing that we do, and you know this, and this gentleman who asked the question knows this, this is of no value if it doesn't help us in the future. So we are, when we set out, that was our not one of our major concerns, and so far we have dealt with it in this other product. Um, as time goes by, perhaps we can bring some of that into and to go on a call in the short term, you need to uh, address, you, you might want to apply some of your own techniques for that, but I'll show you a little bit what I talk, I'll show next, I think will give you some sense of, of one way to think about overfitting. So that's perhaps not the complete answer you wanted, but we could tell you that those are incredibly valid questions. And the tests that I showed you, the, the results I reported to you were um, optimized using those methods that uh, balance the bias and overfitting, and uh, I think you can see the results that they produced. Um, I, I think the the way to wrap it up, yeah. and because it, you know, yeah. we could go on for hours, but yeah, I think we can let people process this. We're going to have the recording available right. um, for review, and for those that could not attend. So if you want to review this report, and then okay. all the no, questions still, that have continued yeah. to come in, we, yeah. we will. I will uh, probably schedule a follow-up meeting to go over more of that. Great. Well, thanks. So here's what I. So here's what we did. We ran we ran 60 back tests. Okay, that's five hours. That's five, six, five hours. That's five years of back testing. We did it in a minute and a half. I will say again, this is not a this is not a foot race. This is a marathon, not a sprint. But efficiency allows you to do some things. Um, we see that we did pretty well. Unfortunately. We still have this negative um, value at 
at the bottom of our confidence interval, and without going into a lot of details, I can tell you that what that means is that statistically speaking, this result is not superior to zero. What does that mean? It means if you did this again, if we ran this experiment again, or more importantly, if you took this strategy into the market against RUT, there is at least reasonable expectation or chance that you would lose money. There's also a greater chance you're going to make money because the average return is above zero. But there is no getting away from this uncertainty. This is the essence of what we do. And I don't care whether you tested this with a Ouija board or you paid Andrew thousands of dollars to back test because apparently he loves to do manual back testing. And or you or or you ran it through Connie Carlo. The, 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 the invitation is the same. We are sampling. There is uncertainty. The uncertainty is magnified by the nature of, of options trading. But now the good news is we've done one of these 27. We can do the rest of the other 26. By the way, you could do all 27 of these tests in an hour and a half. I would, very, I would, I would venture to say there's probably more back testing than any one person's ever done over what in, the, in their lives. So then you could compare and contrast. And that's what I want to do, get very back to very quickly. So I want to show you this outcome and I want to give you a way to think about um, very quickly, just to give, give a way to think about what we saw. Okay. Okay, here are the, the average results. I ran all 27 of these. Here are the average results. Look at this. Some big differences, huh? Look at that. $200 to $1,200. This is for a 10 lot, by the way. I just wanted to give some more numbers that actually would maybe get somebody's attention. When you see you want $8 when you trade, I don't know. Is that all for, is that worth it? Working in under any circumstances. But you can see the great very the great difference we that those what this tells us right away is these the values of these factors make have an impact. And now we can quantify that impact. Um, and for instance, we could look back at exit, we could look back at expiration 18, see what they did. But here's the lesson. This is what you really learned. What you learned is these are the 95% confidence intervals, and I won't, we're getting to another one to take a lot more time, but suffice it to say that this overlap means that there is very little meaningful difference between any of these results. And why is that? Because of the variability associated with the sample and the variability associated with the outcome of these, the outcome of these options trading results. Does that mean that you can't succeed? I don't want to leave you on a negative. Let me, but basically this is the reality that we all face. And I don't, it has nothing to do with Quante Carlo. It has nothing to do with IOTA. It has to do with the reality of the option space. And what this means is that when you get a, a result on one back test and you focus on an endpoint, let's say average return, and it could be anything, that is merely a point it, it, around which there is significant or less significant uncertainty. And what's interesting is, look at the uncertainty associated with uh, 18, combination 18, as opposed to the uncertainty associated with combination one. And when they are statistically equivalent, I would say, let's focus here. Because ultimately, this gives us a chance for a much better predictive reliability going forward than this. The ability, just think about what this means. If you have this information, you're going to trade with it. What do you know? You don't know a lot. As opposed to this, you're, you're, excuse me, the, you know the precision of what you know is, is low. In this case, the precision is pretty high. The other thing that I want to point out is that a lot of these results, these confidence intervals, span zero. Therefore, as we said before, they are not reliably different from zero. Again, this is the reality we all face. Discussion for another day, and I'm going to shut up, is that there are a number of challenges we have to options trading, which Connie Carlo really highlights, but it also gives you ways to hack them. This is a discussion for another day. But I will say to you, as options traders, regardless of what method you use, what tool you use, or whether you use a Ouija board. This high variability of options returns is the single biggest challenge we face. And I can talk about this at, at nauseum. But essentially, the variability of our results, is, we, the variability that we, we allow in our results is so high that it makes it very difficult to find what, in other terms, you call a signal, a truly superior and consistently profitable result. Can it be done? Yes, I showed you how to do it. But these are some of the unique challenges associated with options trading that I believe Quante Carlo and this systematic trading approach are designed to, uh, to help you deal with. 
So, Andrew, at that point, I'll, I'll stop talking and um, hope that some somebody is still open, still awake. And, um, yeah, and we'll... great. no, I, I appreciate the time. Uh, there were more questions that came in, and we're just going to have to say um, you can email those in if you want. Um, I'll type my email in, and uh, David, if you want to type yours in as well. Sure. And where do I type? Where should I type that, Andrew? There should there. Uh, you probably see it. Oh, I see. yeah. If you click on that, there should be a chat right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Okay. So I, th no. those were questions from earlier, but we'll <laughs> we'll we'll just have to avoid. No, I understand. Uh, trying to cover, but email the questions in uh, that you still have. And yeah, right there. Is there an X in your email address? Yes. Iota X. T A T X. Dot com. Okay, it is. Okay, good. All right. Um, so, well, you got my email address there too. Uh, email in your feedback on the topic we just discussed. If you'd like to hear more about it, what your specific questions are from this presentation, or what you would like to hear in future presentations about the systematic options testing. Um, I've been using the word automated to describe what this was going to be and, and uh, I agree with removing that term to make it known that it still is a challenge and there's still a lot of work involved. It's just uh, we get to use the computer to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So uh, I think we may do sessions like this in the future. So if you'd like that, please tell me via email and let me know specifically what you'd like to see in sessions like that. So um, that's it for today. The recording will be posted somewhere and the email will be sent out. If you got the email to come to this meeting, you will get an email about the recording and it will be publicly available, um, not just to paid members of Options. Sorry, we'll keep this one public. So that's it for today. Thank you very much, David. And I look forward to a future session like this to start diving deeper into the applications that we can make with uh, with your software. Thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good day, everyone.